Hi, this is Artifacts of Mars. And we're going to talk about how intelligent design is evident in the reproduction of most insects. Insects that undergo what is known as complete metamorphosis. A lot of this is going to be pretty dry. They have to set it up right or I'm just going to screw up. So, let's get started. Complete metamorphosis, as you see on about dot, dot com, uh, is where the insect lays its egg. And then the egg turns into a larva. Um, in the case of lepidopterans, it's called a caterpillar. Flies, it's called a maggot. Beals, it's called a grub, but whatever you call it, it's a larva. But the interesting part is, when it gets to the pupa stage, every one of these insects, no matter what they are, knows how to build, knows inherently how to build a structure around them, so that their bodies can re redefine themselves. Now, I'd say that's pretty remarkable that all these, just this unbelievable uh, variety of insects, hundreds of thousands of them, know how to, every single one of them knows how to design this little structure around themselves in order to uh, reproduce. I'm leaving out, by the way, Hymenoptera. Hymenoptera is bees and ants and wasps. Their life cycle is different, but they're still undergoing complete metamorphosis. That one's even juicier. That one, those show unbelievable amounts of intelligence. We're going to leave them out for now. This is part one. We're going to go over this briefly. So, you ever seen a chrysalis, like on a uh, milkweed plant? That's the uh, monarch butterfly. We call it chrysalis. Others are called cocoons. Like with a silkworm. That's lepidopteran. That's a uh, moth, if I'm not mistaken. The Chinese make silk out of it. We all know that it's very expensive, blah, blah, blah. All right. So what happens with complete metamorphosis is that these insects are, um, these insects start out as an egg, then the larva is a, basically an eating machine. That's all it does is eat, 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 because it's storing up energy for the transformation. Then, at a time predetermined by nature, uh, the third stage is pupil stage. And every one of these insects builds some kind of a structure around it so it can, its body can reconfigure itself. I don't know where evolutionists get the idea that this reconfiguring business could have just evolved out of nowhere through a series of accidents. That's that is absurd, to say the least. But they do it anyway. You know, some are very ornate, like the chrysalis and silkworm, and some are just these hard casings, like uh, with fly maggots. If I'm not mistaken, mosquitoes hang in their casings right beneath the surface of water, if I'm not mistaken. I'd have to look that up. They undergo complete metamorphosis because they start out as what we call a, rig a wriggler is their larval stage and then it goes into the pupil stage now, I suppose 
some evolutionists are going to say, well, they all came from the same ancestor and they just passed this on down. Well, not so fast. You see, uh, not all of them have the same mouth parts to start with. And not all of them, all of the insects that have complete metamorphosis uh, are vegetarians either. Some of them, such as ladybug, surfer fly, uh, they are predators. They eat other insects. So don't give me this nonsense that they all came from a common ancestor. Besides the fact that they're all so different from each other is pathetic. So having said that, we have hundreds of thousands of insects who have their own structures that they build around themselves in order to reproduce. You see what I'm getting at? It's absurd to sit there and say that all of these just automatically knew, know how to do this. All instinct, nothing to see here. Now, obviously, it was programmed into them. Yeah, it's instinct, but obviously, this stuff has been programmed into them. And with thousands and thousands of examples of totally different insects, uh, and they all know how to do the same thing, that shows planning. Their uh, types of cocoons or casings or whatever may differ. They differ as much as the insects themselves. Now, what types of insects undergo complete metamorphosis? Like I said, Hymenoptera, which is bees and ants and wasps, we're going to leave them alone for now. Coleoptera, is beetles, Lepidoptera, is moths and butterflies, and you have true flies, and probably one or two things, other types. The point here is, they all know how to do the same thing, build a little structure for themselves, and How in the hell could this just have happened all by accident? They couldn't. Don't sit there and try to tell me all, they just came from a common ancestor and it knew how to build a little uh, cave for itself while it transformed its body completely from one form into another. Don't give me this. I'm not buying it and neither should you. These things... Uh, know how to they go from this eating machine and all of a sudden the eating machine uh, a predetermined time stored up enough energy they go to the next step it builds its cocoon or casing whatever and hides out inside it while its body is completely changed into the adult form. And that emerges from this casing, cocoon, whatever is an adult uh, insect. You think that doesn't show design? How the hell could something like that evolve? You'd think it would be much simpler. Um... Uh, if every insect underwent incomplete metamorphosis, which is egg, nymph, adult. It goes from egg and becomes a nymph, which looks a lot like the adult, and then the adult stage. Grasshoppers and cri crickets are the main ones. I think the true bugs are... Uh, Incomplete metamorphosis. I'd have to look that up. And 
Don't know about Dermaptor, which is uh, fleas and bed bugs. I'd have to look that one up. But the point here is that there's no way that all these species could have just had the right exact DNA sequence just magically pop in out of nowhere and teach them how to create this bubble for them to change their bodies in. There's no way. There's a designer there. You call it God, you call it aliens, I don't really care what you call it. I saw it before I'm going, and I'm not backing down on this. Uh, there is a design here. I think, you know, complete metamorphosis morphosis proves this because all these insects couldn't have possibly <laughs> come up with this system on their own. Each single one of them, and they undergo the same exact life cycle, if they're all incomplete metamorphosis, then I'd say, yeah, 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 but huh, not when they do this stuff. Well, that's about it for this segment. There'll be another segment when I get around to it. Uh, second segment is going to do with Hymenoptera. Uh, that order of insects undergoes complete metamorphosis, but they're they're a show unto themselves. They're different. Uh, those are the colony insects and their life cycle. They're much more sophisticated. They have their own language. A task for later attention for now. Uh, just remember, all these insects couldn't have possibly come up with this all on their own. There has to be some kind of a designer, some intelligence behind this that helped create them. I'm Artifacts of Marge. Thank you for watching.